Okay, so my name is Anna Lucic. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam, and this is joint work with uh, my supervisors, Hinda Hanif, who's here somewhere, and Martin Zereike. Um, okay, so this is an overview of the talk. The motivation uh, for this talk is, or for the task, was uh, that prediction mistakes have been shown to significantly uh, affect users' confidence in the model. Uh, and in particular, large mistakes uh, in forecasting are really problematic because when you're, the target you're trying to predict is of order 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7, even a 1 or 2% error is, can be hundreds of thousands of dollars or euros or whatever. Um, so what we aim to do here is offer explanations specifically for, oh, thanks. Can everyone hear me? Better? Okay, great. Um, so what we aim to do here is offer explanations specifically for prediction mistakes um, in the form of contrastive explanations. So why, is the, why did this prediction result in an error rather than not resulting in an error? And we call this not resulting in an error a reasonable prediction. Um, and then existing methods for on contrastive explanations are not specific to errors and are not particular to regression tasks. So this is where our contribution comes in. Uh, the name of our method is Monte Carlo Bounds for Reasonable Predictions. Uh, we're not going to go into the details of the method, so if you're interested, you should read the paper. Um, but basically, the idea is that given an erroneous prediction, where a large error can be defined, we choose a particular definition, but uh, you can choose your own if you want. Um, given an erroneous prediction, our method generates feature values that would result in a reasonable prediction based on the top and most important features. Um, in our case, we use Lime to get the most important features, but again, you can use SHAP or any other feature importance metric that you, uh, method that you think is valuable. And we also offer general trends between each feature and the target variable that we're trying to predict. So we want uh, users to be able to understand how they would need to manipulate the input in order to change the output. Uh, this is an example of our explanation. So the task here is a retail forecasting task. We want to predict uh, sales of some particular store. Uh, the first column shows the total, uh, shows the various features. Um, then we have the trend. This is part of our explanation. So as the total contract hours increase, the sales of the store increase. Uh, we have the feature values in the third column and the range for which we would need, uh, the range we need these features to be in in order to have a reasonable prediction. So as we see here, all the values are outside of this reasonable range which results in an erroneous prediction. Is that kind of clear? Okay. So we evaluate this through a user study with 75 participants, which was uh, really nice to be able to get that many people uh, participating, uh, both in objective and subjective ways. Um, our first research question is the objective component. So we want to know if our contrastive explanations are interpretable and actionable. And we do this through forward and counterfactual simulations, which I'll show in the next slides. Um, and the second thing we do is evaluate in subjective terms uh, to see what the impact of our explanations are on users' uh, attitudes towards the model. And we do this by splitting users into a treatment group, which receives the explanations, and a control group, which doesn't receive the explanations. Uh, and we ask them the same set of subjective questions before and after uh, conducting the tasks. Uh, so this is an example of a forward simulation. So we give the user um, the input features, right, so the same table I showed before with the input and the values. We give them the explanation, the trend, and the reasonable range, and we ask them, does this prediction result in a large error? So we're asking them to simulate the model. So does anyone want to take a guess here if this results in a, re in a large error? Yes? Can you say why? Exactly, great. So here's the counterfactual simulation. Um, this is slightly different, so we give, the, uh, we give the same explanation, but we tell you now this does result in a large error. What can you do to change uh, the input values in order to change the prediction? Anyone? Lower them. Lower them, excellent. Okay, great. Uh, and we found that people were able to do this, so 81% uh, eight, or almost 82% overall accuracy to perform these simulations, which was great. That tells us that users are able to interp both interpret our explanations as well as in an actionable way such that they understand how to change the input in order to change the output. 
Uh, the second part is where we ask them the subjective questions. So we have a set of users that don't receive explanations, a set of users that do, and we ask them the same set of subjective questions before and after completing the task. And these are the questions, so uh, based on a user study by one of our colleagues, Marcia Terhuva, uh, I understand why the model makes large errors in predictions. I would support using this as a forecasting tool. I trust this model, and in my opinion, this model produces mostly reasonable outputs. Uh, so we find that users in the treatment group, so those that did see the explanations, agree with uh, the fact that the explanations help them understand errors significantly more than users in the control group. So this is the first, uh, the first top left table here. Um, and we just see that the distribution of agree, disagree, neutral is very different for the top left graph, whereas they're pretty similar for the others. So, uh, yeah, this tells us that our explanations help users understand why the model makes predictions and errors, which is good because that was the whole point. Um, but it we, does tell us that this is not enough, so it doesn't have an impact on users supporting deployment of the model, um, in trusting the model, or in their attitudes towards uh, how well it performs, so that it has reasonable predictions. Um, another thing we did, so we had in our treatment group, we had both, or in both groups, we had people from uh, practitioners, so people who work in industry, as well as researchers, people in academia, actually all from our university, which was nice. Um, and then we wanted to see if our results still hold when conditioning on the user's background. And we find uh, that they do, so uh, we see that for the first question, does this, uh, I, this, these explanations help me uh, understand errors in the model, that we have similar distributions for both the practitioners and the researchers, and that overwhelmingly, yes, people say that uh, our explanations help them understand errors in model predictions. Um, however, we see that there is a difference in distributions for the other uh, three questions, showing that researchers are more likely to support deployment, trust the model, and say that the model has reasonable predictions. So this tells us that uh, we've still got some work to do, that our explanations do seem to be tailored specifically to the, or not necessarily tailored, but do seem to perform better um, for people in the research community. Um, so in conclusion, we contribute a method. Uh, again, if you're interested, I suggest that you go read the paper. There's also some, uh, an appendix at the end of these slides that I'm not gonna go through, but you can uh, see if you want some more details there. Um, we see that our explanations are interpretable and actionable with an average accuracy of almost 82%. So this answers our first research question. Um, we see that they have a significant effect on helping users understand why the model makes prediction mistakes, um, which is great. Um, however, uh, but not on the other three questions that we talked about. And we also see that our explanations are more beneficial to researchers rather than practitioners, which shows that there is still some uh, room to improve and uh, yeah, seems to be a future research direction for us or for someone else who's interested. Thanks. <laughs>